So I really like watching tattoo videos on YouTube, so I figured it would be kind of fair to upload my own. I got my first tattoo when I was a couple months shy of 21. It was at a tattoo convention here in Stockholm, and I did no research. I picked the artist solely based on the fact that he was from San Diego, where I used to live. It's a question mark on my stomach. It's not any like font, I just I drew question marks for like two years because I knew that it was a tattoo that I wanted. I like the way they look, but I also, you know, I believe in asking questions and, and questioning things. This was a couple of years before I decided to become a journalist, but you know, it's still fitting. This is my oldest tattoo and it, you know, you, you gain weight, you lose weight, it happens in your stomach, the skin's kind of thin, but I still like it. The way most pants sit, it kind of looks like I have a two on my stomach as they cut it off. So I joke that it's like, it's a tattoo about poop, number two. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. I remember it being, you know, fairly painful because the stomach is a sensitive spot, the skin is thin. Uh, at one point it got kind of close to my hip bone and you get this weird vibration thing. But I think part of that is also that just when you've never done it before, uh, an unexpected and sort of surprising pain I think is often worse than, than when you know what it's going to be. I was going to say like, oh, it's a six out of ten for painfulness, but it's, it's weird putting numbers on tattoo pain because it's like, is it, you know, the worst tattoo pain you can imagine or have experienced or the worst pain in general that you've experienced or can imagine. Plus, like, yeah, this was painful, but it, it was over in like 10 or 15 minutes and you, you can put up with, with a lot of things for 10 or 15 minutes. So painful, but not that bad. Then about a year after that, I started my cherry blossom half sleeve. Uh, originally, it was just going to be like sort of a, a shoulder cap, but then we decided to continue it down, or I did, because it, it peaked out from t-shirts, so I figure if it's visible, why not do it all the way? And I just felt like making it bigger. Uh, my mom planted trees in her garden for each of her kids, and mine was a big cherry tree. Or it became a big cherry tree, it was small, and she planted it. And I just loved the way it would blossom each year, you know, it turns into this huge white cloud. And so I wanted to do, do something with with that. Originally I was going to have the flowers just white, but it's, it, it doesn't show up as well. The idea is that it's supposed to look sort of watercolory and, and pale and soft. Uh, a lot of people ask if it's if it's finished, and it is. It does, I think, maybe need some love, maybe some um, touch-ups, because, you know, it's been over 10 years, uh, and even though, you know, I'm very careful about putting sunscreen on it, still it will fade a little. It turns beige in the summers, uh, if I'm not careful. Um, and also the the branches between the upper and the lower part don't quite match. Uh, but <laughs> it's funny because I, I kind of feel like, you know, if I'm going to invest that time and pain and money, I want to do it for something new and fun. Um, uh, and so we'll see when I get around to it, but it will probably get a touch up sometime soon. Most of the upper arm doesn't really hurt that much. I mean, obviously it hurts. It's a tattoo, but it's it's fleshy. It's not that bad. Where it really started hurting was, you know, the bonier parts, like the actual shoulder. Uh, parts of it come onto a little bit of my collarbone. That was not fun. A little bit on the inner arm, but on the whole, it was it was fine. And then there were a couple of years when I didn't get tattoos, and I don't, I don't think there was a reason why I just did, didn't do it. But the next tattoo I got was the semicolon on my uh, left lower arm, and. Again, like with the question mark, I like the way they look, I like what they do in language, uh, and uh, a part of me kind of likes that not everyone is sure how to use them, like what they do in language. I got it before the semicolon project, which uh, I'll link below, but uh, there the semicolon uh, represents having struggled with self-harm or uh, suicidal thoughts or suicide attempts. Uh, and. I don't mind if people think that's why I got it, but it is kind of a weird, funny coincidence that that happened afterwards. It was really quick. The tattoo artist, I think, said that um, he wouldn't even charge me his normal minimum amount because, I mean, he still had to set up his ink and needles, but he was like, this is, you know, five or six minutes, I'd feel bad. So, um, again, it was painful because it's sort of on the bone, but it was so quick that it was fine. Like, uh, he was finishing up while I thought he was still doing the line work, so it was fine. After that, I got a Space Invader on my inner ankle. Uh, always loved playing the game when I was a kid. I like the way they look, you know, I, I, I like retro video games. So again, fairly fast tattoo, so not that bad, but it is over some pretty bony spots. I don't know why I managed to pick uh, bonier areas, but what you gonna do? And then for Halloween, uh, I think the year after, 
uh, my best friend and her boyfriend asked if I wanted to join them and go to the studio that had a Halloween special. So for 666 crowns, uh, you would get one of their specially drawn Halloween flash tattoos. Uh, and Halloween is my birthday and I thought it was a fun thing to do, so I got a dead bird on my other outer ankle. Originally it had some like arrows in its chest, but I took those out. I joke that it's kind of like a Monty Python tattoo, like, you know, it's not dead, it's just resting. Uh, but I also do like the idea of tattoos that don't have a meaning, that's just like a fun thing. So the next year I went and got uh, the three-eyed cat on the other side of that ankle, and I've kind of considered turning this leg into a sort of, you know, special event or souvenir tattoo leg. Uh, I was sick last year, so I didn't go to the Halloween thing. Um, but if they have it this year, I'll probably go again and like, you know, fill that leg up with random fun stuff. Again, <laughs> near bony parts of the ankle, not quite as close, uh, but they took longer, so they were a little bit more painful. And then I sort of just stayed with that studio. So uh, Kim Adagia, uh, I'll link her Instagram below, uh, she did both the bird and the cat, and then I came back and I wanted an octopus on my lower leg. Originally, I actually wanted it on my thigh, uh, but I realized that the way I wanted it placed, uh, unless I was wearing uh, a bathing suit, even super short like skirts or shorts would sort of cut it off so that it looked like tentacles were coming out of my lady bits, which might have been cool but wasn't the look I was going for. So I put it on my lower leg. I just, I think octopuses, octopodes, octopi, I think they're super cool animals. Like they're creepy, they're sort of prehistoric, uh, they're smart. Uh, you know, they're escape artists, they can do camouflage, they can they probably do, you know, advanced math and stuff. And I wanted it to look sort of like an old illustration from like a, a medical book or a biological textbook or something. Uh, and Kim really got what I wanted. So that was cool. Uh, the pain here was uh, a lot worse than the tattoos that I'd gotten in the past. Uh, and again, bony areas, but here both ankle bone and then the front of the leg, which I thought was horrible like over the bony bit and I know that people feel really differently like some people think it doesn't hurt at all for me it was horrible and then like up near the knee pit not fun uh, she we did it in two sessions so the first was the outline and the second was the shading and when she was doing the outline uh, she did it and then she wanted to go over it again to fatten parts of it up and I was not happy about that because like I was running out of adrenaline I was tired it was hurting so she used this numbing spray you have to spray it on sort of already open wounds so that it can go and you can't use it ahead of time. Um, then they put on plastic and you wait 15 minutes and then you're numb, you're good to go. Uh, so that was awesome, like, I, you know, I could feel it, but it wasn't that same sort of sharp, stabby, scratchy pain. Uh, but uh, she missed, like, a spot or two on the front of my leg, on the bony bit, of course, and so uh, she would, like, be tattooing and then suddenly hit an area that wasn't numb. So, like, out of nowhere was this really sharp pain. So those bits, not great. Um, but I soldiered through it. I think the worst part was actually, you know, lying on my side holding my legs sort of still-ish. So you get, I would get like sore muscles on my inner thighs because I was trying to uh, just hold a really weird position. And I find that a lot, like certain tattoo sessions will just like, you'll be numb or sore or painful, not just in the tattoo, but in like a weird muscle that you've had to hold your arm sort of curled funny. After that, I got a tattoo from Clara, who uh, runs Speakeasy Tattoo Parlor. Um, Kim's not there anymore, but she was still there then. And I got a manatee on my right thigh. And I knew that I wanted a manatee tattoo. They're my favorite animal. Uh, but for a while, I'd been thinking about getting a sort of old lady-themed half-sleeve on my left arm. You know, like all the things I like, you know, comfy chairs and tea and knitting and like all that stuff. Um, and then I decided that I wanted a knitting manatee, just because it's, you know, it's weird, it's absurd, it's funny. Um, and she really liked the idea and I thought that her style would be really suited to it. Uh, and I remember coming into the studio to look at the drawing when we were going to do the tattoo. And I'd been thinking, like, maybe, maybe the, the manatee should be sitting in an armchair. Because, again, even more weird, even more funny. And she'd already drawn the armchair, like I hadn't told her yet. So that was really cool, like, so the armchair and the, the lamp and all that stuff. And it's knitting a mitten, but manatees don't have thumbs, so, you know, it's charity knitting. One thing that I thought about a lot here was, like, so do you do the knitting, like, both the knitting needles and the yarn the way that I would normally have it? Like, with circular needles and a cake yarn? 
or do you do it so that it's sort of the way people understand knitting? So that was, you know, I went a bit back and forth on that, but I like the way it turned out. It's not colored in yet, I didn't get around to it for a while. Now I actually have an appointment in January to get it colored in, like, I'm really happy for for the studio that they're so booked. I mean, they're, they're amazing, they deserve it, but I'm impatient, so uh, that's that kind, of, that kind of sad, but whatever. So the thigh I thought would be, you know, meaty, not that painful, uh, but apparently I have sensitive thighs, who knew? But also parts of it, you know, closer to the kneecap, not that great, up, getting close to the bikini area, not fun. And I think part of it is also just like, with a larger tattoo, you start to lose steam. Like you run out of adrenaline, you run out of whatever it is that's trying to protect your brain from the pain. Um, but I did do the outline in just one session, so uh, I guess I, I soldiered through. Then I got two more tattoos from Kim, uh, the rat on my lower arm. Uh, originally I came in because I thought that I wanted like a fossil, like an ammonite or something. Um, and I'd been thinking about this comic strip and I showed it to her and asked if she thought it would make a good tattoo and she was super enthusiastic because, you know, she likes rodents, she has uh, guinea pigs, and she liked the way it looked, so we changed the plan and did that. It's from this webcomic called Wondermark, I'll, I'll link it in the description. Uh, and this strip, it's just, it's this guy, he takes old illustrations and gives them speech bubbles and turns them into these sort of absurdist little strips. And this comic strip is just one of the most hilarious ones I laugh. Every time I read it, I laugh every time I try to describe it. And my husband and I joke that it kind of represents our relationship. We take turns um, being the tuba rat and the gerbil, which will make a lot more sense if you read the strip. The lower inner arm is fairly painful because the the skin is thin, but it's a different kind of pain. Like it, I, to me at least, it's like a sharper kind of uh, pain. Um, still bearable. Again, yeah, not a huge tattoo, so it was fine. Uh, but this was my first what I would consider really visible tattoo. Uh, the semicolon people can see. I thought it would be fairly invisible, but you know the way I talk, the way I sit, you can see it. But it's not huge. Not everyone sees it, and most people who see it um, think it's cool. Like you know, they want to talk about how do you use a semicolon anyway. Uh, but this is you know fairly big and visible. So I was a little bit nervous about that because it was like you know crossing some sort of line or threshold of, of visible tattoos. Um, but it's funny because I tend to push my sleeves up to like a you know, three quarters length and you can just usually just see the feet of the rat. So it's just like red rodent on my arm. Um, but it was fine, you know, but then I suddenly felt asymmetrical. And usually like, I'd like the, the feeling of balance when it comes to tattoos and body modifications. Like I know where, like I kind of feel where they should go. And usually that's not about symmetry. It's just like some sort of balance. Uh, but I felt like I needed something on my other arm. So I got the hourglass. And I joke that it's like my hipster version of a Memento Mori Carpe Diem tattoo because it's, you know, there's not that much sand left. And some people think that's morbid, like, oh, you're gonna die any second. But to me, it's just like sort of a thought of, you know, do what you gotta do because you never know. Um, I also just like the way they look. Like, you know, they're, they're, I like old instruments for measuring things and, and science and design. So that's, it's cool. About two years ago, I was at a wedding where I met Mia Bouquet, who is an amazing tattoo artist. I already knew who she was. And a couple of us went out to lunch like a day or two after the wedding and she started talking about this idea for a, a fika sleeve, so like traditional Swedish baked goods, porcelain, that kind of thing. And she hadn't found anyone who wanted to get it. And I was like, well, that's pretty much, you know, a replacement for my old lady theme sleeve, so that's awesome. And her thing is that uh, when it's an idea that she had and she really wants to do, she does it for free because, you know, she finds someone to give her free reign. Uh, so I just travel up uh, once or twice a year for the past couple of years. I do get input, like what baked goods specifically and like where the placement should be, but it's it's her thing. She, she gets to do her thing and I'm super happy to, to let her do it because again, she is amazing. I'll link her Instagram below, like take a look. She also does amazing portraits and like pastel and watercolor and, and ink, so definitely check her out. So the idea is that a lot of people do like American baked goods or like dinery 
50s-ish stuff like cupcakes and donuts. So uh, the idea here is to do traditional old school Swedish baked goods. So uh, the first session was the teacup, which is again traditional Swedish uh, china pattern from Gustav's Bay. It's a pattern that a lot of people collect. You know, everyone recognizes it when they see it. Um, and what's called a, a damsugera or a vacuum cleaner because it looks sort of like an upright vacuum cleaner from like the 40s or 50s. This marzipan and Eric and chocolate is delicious but very very Swedish. And on the plate of the cup is a finskpinna finish stick. It's like a, a crumbly uh, almondy cookie. It's really good. And the next session was the cinnamon roll and the sugar cookies that are chocolate and vanilla. They're called um, chess cookies. Also really good. And then the last session was uh, semla, which is a sort of uh, cardamom bun with whipped cream and almond paste or marzipan, which we eat um, before Lent, like on Fat Tuesday. Technically on Fat Tuesday, people sometimes start eating them in January, but whatever. They're delicious. They're amazing. It's not done. I think there's at least two or three sessions left. It's going to be like a, you know, a tiered cake stand with cookies on it, a big uh, metal teapot on the, my inner arm nuts not gonna be fun. Again, thin skin, it's gonna hurt. Uh, here, like with the other arm, parts of it are fine. You know, it's fleshy. It hurts, but it's okay. You sit there, you think about life, you wonder why you put yourself through this. Um, but near the elbow on the back uh, was not fun. Uh, and because, you know, this is all colored in, uh, there is a lot of going over the same area and staying in the same spot. So it's not like, oh, it's lining, I, you know, it's gonna be done soon. So that's not great. And the same with um, near the inner elbow, like just like parts of it, I sometimes start, you know, jokingly cursing at her, which she finds hilarious. So I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how it grows and, and what happens. It's funny, this is like the tattoo that people love the most, and I wouldn't have expected that it would get, you know, so much attention and enthusiasm. Uh, I mean, it's deserved because <laughs> it's a gorgeous tattoo, but people just, they love the idea, they love the execution, they you know, want to take pictures of it, that, so that's funny. And, well, that's my tattoos. Uh, I have actually a session booked in a couple of weeks. I might take the camera with me. I'll show it off afterwards, hopefully. Uh, and then going to get the manatee colored. Aside from that, I don't... I don't have specific plans. I try to not be too spontaneous with my tattoos, which is a lie, because I have several very spontaneous tattoos. But, like, I try to now think a little bit more about it because you know you do have a limited amount of space and even though that is quite a lot of space especially if you like cake uh you know you, you want to have make sure that the stuff you get is stuff you like because once you're full you're full not that i know that i'll get a bodysuit but you know what i mean um for instance my back is completely blank because you know it's, it's prime real estate it's a big area you want to save it for something cool um Maybe. Or maybe I'll never do it. Then on the other hand, maybe I should, you know, work hard to cover myself before the skin gets thin and wrinkly and harder to tattoo, but uh, I don't know. If you have any questions or, or thoughts, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, all my social media and the people that I mentioned are in the description box. Subscribe, like, whatever, do all that stuff. Be nice to yourself, drink some water, take a nap, and I'll see you later. Bye!